Okay, so this video is uh, about the Coriolis force, but first, to introduce it, we're going to teach you about fictitious forces. Uh, so first, we're going to go through just a, a normal you know, fictitious force in a car, and then we're going to talk about the centrifugal force in a rotating, accelerating frame. So an example of a fictitious force is when you're in a car. So if this car is accelerating in this direction forwards and there are two observers. Firstly there is one observer inside the car and there is another observer outside the car. And let's say inside the car there is a ball and it, the ball is free to move inside the car. Now when the car accelerates, the ball is going to roll towards the back of the car. For the observer inside the car, he sees it accelerate towards the back. However, for the person outside, it sees the ball stationary. So this is the fictitious force. The ball feels like it's accelerating backwards, whereas for another observer, it's stationary. Okay, so now we're going to look at the fictitious forces in an accelerating frame. So we're going to look at the centrifugal force. Here we are rotating a pen in circular motion around a central point. And the centripetal force here is applied by the tension in the string. As you can see, as it's rotating, the pen doesn't fall towards the center, even though the acceleration is towards the center. This is because the velocity is perpendicular and is constantly changing. So this is consistent with Newton's laws. However, if we change our perspective into that of the rotating frame, we see that the pen is stationary. However, there is a tension in the string, meaning that the pen should accelerate towards us. However, it doesn't. Therefore, we need to create a new fictitious force, which is equal and opposite to that of the tension in the string. This is the centrifugal force. So now I'm going to talk about the Coriolis force. In my opinion, it's the most interesting but most complicated fictitious force. So as you can see from the first part of this video, the ball bearing rolls over a rotating surface. From above, the ball travels in a straight line, which is consistent with Newton's laws of physics. There is no resultant force, and thus no acceleration. Therefore, the ball moves in a constant velocity. Now in the next part of the video, the camera is mounted onto the turntable, and the ball is thrown the same way. It is obvious that it's moving in a curved path instead of a straight line as with before. This inconsistency arises from observing the same motion from different frames. The rotating frame views the ball bearing traveling in a curved path without any forces acting on it. So to explain this curved motion, a fictitious force must be made up, and we call this force the Coriolis force. So another way of looking at the Coriolis force, if you imagine the turntable again, and a person is standing on there and then you're looking at it from above he will throw a projectile away from himself in a straight line now if the turntable is moving fast enough he can rotate to that point before the projectile reaches that point and thus he can catch a projectile that he threw away from himself earlier on now in the accelerating frame or the rotating reference frame he will see the ball in going in a curved path like this, even though he threw it straight. So James, what did we learn today? Well, we learned that from one frame, Newton's laws apply, but when we look from the accelerated frame, they don't apply, and so we have to create a new fictitious force. To explain the motion? Yeah. That's right. Physics Productions!
Yep. Okay, so now after looking at that, we're going. Uh, <laughs> 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 